Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a long time since my last post. I had every intention to upload this video sort of a week or two after my last and then Townsville decided to have a one in 2000 year flood event. So it's been a bit crazy the last few weeks. We then started the cleanup so we went out with work and helped uh, clear away a heap of the rubbish which was really confronting um, seeing people's entire houses just out on the street and we were just dumping it all because they they couldn't keep it once you've had sewage water through your house everything becomes a biohazard yeah so sorry about the delay in this video but if you want to keep up to date with what i'm doing how's the cruiser going we've also got another project that we've just bought head over to my Instagram. I'll put the handle down the bottom somewhere and also in the description will be the link where I post all the stuff. So day-to-day -day stuff, you can see all the crazy poppers. And I love getting messages from people who have come from YouTube. So if you head over there, feel free to send me a message. I reply to everyone. Say, hey, how's it going? This video uh, that you're about to see is of my diff pinion replacement that I did on holidays while I was in Mackay. Confidently tell you that I have no more leaks so I must have semi-fixed the problem. Again this is a, a repair job that I did myself and I'd never actually done this before. I was relying purely on OEM manuals and word of mouth and how people have done it and what their results have been and things like that. It was done to get me home because I had to go back to work and I was four hours away at my parents place. I have every intention to replace the bearings and the crush spacer and put in a solid spacer. Uh, there was no jacking of the vehicle, so the vehicle remained on the ground at all times. So I'll be interested to see what people pick apart this time. I really didn't think that's what it would be last time. I thought people would have a go at my uh, bearing settings or something like that. And all I have to say is if you have safety stands, 100% use them. If if you have something to put under the axle, 100% use them. In my case, and if you're off-road, if you're even on the side of the highway, most people don't carry a jack stand. So you've got to be able to work safely and manage and assess risk without relying on, on safety devices. That's just a way of life. You're not always going to be there. I believe that you've still got to have that gut instinct and you've got to look at everything continually as you're doing it and go, look, is this safe? Do I feel safe doing this? If not, stop. You can't just go, oh, I've got a jack stand. Nothing can happen and you and you stop assessing risk. That's, that's how accidents do happen. A lot of people say to chuck the wheel under. My 35 does not fit under my axle. Uh, and that would have been the only thing that would stop the axle from falling. Putting it under my chassis would not stop the axle from dropping. Did a video on my Instagram showing the jack if it collapsed, it's not a hydraulic jack, it's very unlikely for a screw type jack to just suddenly drop down because it would have to shear all the threads. I can still sit under my guard. So yes, there was risk involved in not having a jack stand, but there's risk in literally everything we do. And if I had a jack stand, I 100% would have used it. And I 100% recommend everyone else to use a jack stand. It's just not something you're always going to have and you've just got to work with that. You've just got to be aware. You've got to be constantly assessing risk. If you're not assessing risk constantly throughout a job, then that's bad. Uh, and I have no doubt that there will be something else in this video that people will pick apart. But at the end of the day, this is just me showing you guys how I how I do things in the real life. There's no, there's no fake shit. There's no covering it up. There's no anything like that. It's literally just me filming as much as I can of a job. If pinion seal, I actually ran out of battery on both of my cameras during this video. There is a little bit missing. So you won't see me filling up the diff afterwards. I did do a refill for the diff fluid using Penrite 8090 and they've got the squeeze top. You just pull the top out and you can squeeze it in, which makes it a lot easier. Definitely had to get a new nut and a new seal. If you were doing it, you'd get a whole kit. That's definitely something you'd do if you had the time to pull out your whole diff. Then you could measure your backlash and make sure that everything actually is in spec before you go putting it back in. So this I noticed when I was coming back from the beach and it's about a 40 minute drive from where we were to my parents' place. And I stopped in town and washed my whole car just to get all the salt water off. And I didn't notice anything then. And then when I got back to my parents' place, there was a very distinct gear oil smell. And I believe once gear oil has touched your taste buds, you, you can smell it from a mile away. 
Yeah, so as soon as I hopped out of the car, I can smell gear oil. I don't know where it is, but I can smell it. I'm looking, I'm smelling, and just on my inner mud flap was just covered in oil. So I jumped underneath, and yes, of course, there's oil everywhere. This is the video. Alrighty, guys, we are back under the cruiser. Actually, I was really under the cruiser last time. But I am now, because nothing is ever fixed. There's always something wrong on a forward drive. Got a bit of a leak. Just a little bit. <laughs> and it's just sprayed oil everywhere. And we don't really have the tools for this either. So we're gonna have some fun. Alright, so I've never done one of these, but we're gonna try. Yeah. Do you have your rattle gun? Huh? Do you have a rattle gun? Rattle gun? Yeah. yeah. This here isn't the tower shaft. Like that bit isn't. It's gonna go up towards me. The last big lap, is it? Yeah. This one's gonna go down. That's a tidy up. Push that one up that way. Oh, you got it. In there. We don't pull them back in the same spot though. Why be? Got a hacksaw. Pardon? Got a hacksaw and just mark it. Ah, scare markers. Good enough, it's not going to come off. Yeah, good enough. Uh, I think, is it that side? Yeah. Both. Both, I mean. Oh, yeah, that'd be. Yeah, it's supposed to be 200, what did I say, 245? And it was probably easier to undo than the drive shaft bolts. <laughs> a lot of chickens. It's got a little chip taken out of it. It's a washer. Yep. Your screw job is not. Tapper in there, yeah, and you get a, um, a what's the name, a um, claw hammer, yeah, and you put it behind it and you lever and pull on the screw which is screwed into there. Do you have one of those? Yeah, oh, there it goes. Let's see how far. It is. Alright, so I've just taken this breather T piece off the axle housing uh, and blown out the breather hose as well because if either of those are blocked, you're gonna get pressure build up and your seal will blow. So this one was a little bit blocked, so that could have been the reason why. Clean these ones out, but I rarely clean that one out because you've got to remove brake line bracket to get it off. Alrighty, so the flange has two grooves from the seal, so we're going to put a speedy sleeve on. 
if you can buy a new one of these that's probably the, the best way but if you put a new seal on with that lip you're just going to have the same issues again with oil leaking past it so the speedy sleeve there's a part number for the exact match if it's factory so that's the actual speedy sleeve with the flange on the end and that's your installation tool so that one goes over the shaft and you hit against the installation tool until you get it down far enough there is a pre-cut groove that runs along the side of this so you can cut this flange and then peel this off once you've installed it but we're just going to leave it on because it's on the other side of the seal it's not really going to make a difference like if oil's already leaked past the sealing surface then whether there's that on the end isn't going to make a difference so we've cleaned up this surface as best we can and we're going to install that one oh you know what eh That's the end of the speedy sleeve there, and the flange is still on. Yeah, yeah just to... <coughs> I can try this seal. Hold on, I'll just try this other seal. See if it'll start it. One mil below the ceiling surface, or the flange. That is about one mil. Because that wasn't even tight. So we've gone the same number of turns to where the old nut sort of sat because we pushed the seal back a little more. Mm. We're going to push the nut back so it's in the same spot. Yeah. Yep. I think. We need to a couple of mil length. I think that'll do. So because we're not replacing the crush washer, you don't want to go more tight because you're going to load up your crown wheel and pinion and cause all sorts of dramas so we've just gone maybe three mil more so we'll see how that goes so we put the new pinion nut back on i've done it up to the same number of turns which, which is what the old one came off at and probably two to three mil more we're going to see how that goes that was the most recommended way of doing this um, if you wanted to do it properly you would pull out all the bearings, the crush spacer, and do it all again and reset your preload. To do that, you've got to jack the back wheels up, have a small torque wrench that goes down to like 0.2, something small like that, so that you can measure the preload and then tighten the nut slowly until you get it in the spec. But I don't think we have a small enough torque wrench. That looks like a big torque wrench. Yeah, what's the smallest newton meter? Or is it yours in foot pound? That's way too big to swing around in here anyway. <laughs> yeah, 
So you need a really, really small torque wrench to that would have 0.7 to 1. Spin it if it's below 0.7. It says to go up in increments of 13 newton meters, so you'd hold the flange, tighten the nut 13 newton meters, measure it again, and then don't go above one, because if you go above one, you've crushed the spacer too far, is my understanding of that. And then you can't, and you've got to replace it again. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> We've just gone to what it was, plus a little bit more so all right so I just bought this punch set because I was using screwdrivers to get off the old nut which is why it has chip taken out of it so I bought an actual punch set from super cheap uh, and we're gonna stake it properly I don't know if this is the proper way but it seems like a good way to do it Oh. Alrighty guys, so that was where my cameras died. <laughs> That's the end of the video, but all I did pretty much after that was reversed the cruiser back to level ground and I filled the diff oil back up because it was a bit low. Obviously a fair bit had dripped out. I used Penrite's gear oil. That's the stuff that I recommend using. I've used Penrite through everything in my car, uh, engine transfer, gearbox, diffs, they all have Penrite. You'll also see that I blew out my diff breathers. So my diff breathers only go to my chassis rail. I need to extend them. If you buy a four-wheel drive, you need to do this first. I've had a four-wheel drive for eight years and I still haven't done it. That's something that I definitely need to do. You can extend them back up into your engine bay. Some people have them on their headboards. That way when you go through water crossings, they don't get water into the diff. What I think's happened, you would have seen the last video in the last few minutes, water <laughs> bog hole. We went forward driving and I believe that blocked up that breather. So what that does is their pressure builds up in the axle housing from the diff. It'll either push your axle seals out and you'll get fluid coming through your swivel hubs or yeah, you'll do a pinion seal. So it'll push that seal out and it will leak oil. That could have been the issue. That is my own fault for not running diff breathing. Alrighty, so this crazy shirt that I'm wearing is Trademutt's workwear and they have an amazing focus. I'll put their links all down below, but definitely go and check them out. And if you're a tradie, if you're working outside, if you need a good quality shirt, these are amazing. Like I really want to wear it to mechanic but I don't want to dirty it, but I probably will eventually. <laughs> yeah, so jump on and have a read of the story behind these shirts because they are not just a work shirt. And across the back is, this is a conversation starter because that is exactly why these shirts are so crazy. It is to get a conversation started and the whole focus behind the company is mental health, focused around men's mental health because men like to keep things bottled up they're more likely to brush things off and of course there's women like that as well it's something that needs more attention it needs people who know how to start those conversations know how to be there for someone so if you jump on their website they have a list of conversation tips and how to talk to someone and how to be prepared for what they're going to say and how to ask those difficult questions i th i think it's a great great idea and definitely check it out if you have time. If you enjoyed this video, uh, if you have any questions you want to ask or anything like that, just drop a comment down below letting me know your feedback. So yeah, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, that way you don't miss any videos that I upload in the future, even though they're taking forever. I'm sorry. I think if you hit the notification bell, something else happens. There's just too many things to hit now and even I don't know what they do. I don't know, hit that if you want to whatever it does let me know i don't know 